Hey guys, it's Sam and these are my favorite books of 2020. So I do want to mention that I am going to be doing this list video and then later this month I'll be doing like a book awards for 2020 video because on this list I only have 10 books. Your girl was very picky this year. And the award show video will give you like a little bit more varied, some books that like didn't really make like the favorites but were a favorite in like a specific theme or category. So I think that'll be fun. And when I asked you guys on a video recently, you kind of said like both. <laughs> like some people were like, I love the list. And some were like, I love the awards. So you're gonna get both. I love New Year's content, so might as well. But let's get to the list. And this year, I just tweeted about it that I decided I was gonna do this. Um, I ranked them. <laughs> Yes. None of that like, oh, these are in no particular order. They're in order. <laughs> I ranked them because there were so few that I kind of could. I don't know. I didn't rank many books five stars. And even not all of these on the list are actually five stars. Like, it's wild. Anyway, let's get into it. Oh, and I know I said let's get into it, but I'm just not getting into it. But three of these, three of the ten, are romance books. I know I keep saying on my channel for over the last year, like, oh my gosh, I like romance books. Oh my god, there's favorites. And all of you were like, we know. <laughs> but I'm still shocked because I was never this person. And three of my favorite books of the year are romance books. I'm happy about it. I'm just surprised. So speaking of, number 10 on the list is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adam. This is the first book in like technically the Bromance Book Club series, but I haven't liked the next two books in the series, just this one. This is gonna be a theme with some of the romance books I talk about. But this first book features, is it Gavin and Tessa? I didn't write their names down for this. I'm just going off of memory. And he is a pro baseball player and they're married and they are going to get divorced because of of, like just growing apart over time and like all this stuff and identity and whatever and so this is a second chance lovers like married couple book and so in order to like try to understand her and win her back his friends bring him into their book club where they all all these straight men read romance novels as like manuals to dating and it sounds like that would make it very like eh. it's not they're not like players they use very like eloquent emotionally intelligent language and this first book is fantastic. I loved them as a couple. Gavin is like so sweet and wonderful. He has a stutter which is a part of the plot and just he's that representation was really good and this first book did such a good job of keeping the story very focused on them. In the later couple of books she's gotten the author's gotten very focused on like putting a lot of plot points and issues in there that just get very distracted from the story. This first book so so good like their dynamic so so good so I love this one I still think about it a lot then at number nine we have the start of a series that is completed but I just started it that is Theft of Swords by Michael J Sullivan the first book in the Rare of Revelation series this was a book that I didn't immediately add to my favorite shelf but I just went back before filming this video and was like are there any more because when I first was going to film there's only seven books on my list and I was like there has to be more than seven and I only got to ten but this was one of them that I was like I still thought about this a lot like I still think about Royce and Hadrian a lot this is the first book in a fantasy series. I think I did a review for it, so I'll link that on the screen. But it's a very classical fantasy, like swords and sorcery kind of type series. There's like elves, there's dwarves, there's wizards. These guys are thieves and they're two very famous thieves in this world and they get assigned like a gig or, or, or a task, whatever they call them. And it's almost like too good to be true and it is and they get pulled into like the political machinations of this world and I just adored this first book. This book felt like so homey and great and just like I don't there's just something about it that felt so nostalgic even though I didn't necessarily grow up reading like high fantasy but these kinds of tropes feel so nostalgic to me so I really love this one. Then and number eight, another romance book. We have Well Met by Jen DeLuca and pretty much the same as the Romance Book Club. I've read on the series and the third book I think I'll really like but it's not out yet. But this first book was fantastic and I didn't like the second book as much. But anyway, this is an adult contemporary romance, takes place in a Ren fair and our main characters are like an enemies to lovers thing. Like they, they don't like each other and they're like, she's new in town and she's there helping her sister with something and he's in charge of this like Ren fair and he like kind of is just like a colder, like very strict with the rules kind of guy and there's like kind of a misunderstanding about them not liking each other but their characters in the Ren Fair, her being a uh, bar wench and him being a pirate like each other. So there's all this tension do you see I, I like still really love this book so much obviously it's on my favorites list. There's all this tension when they're in character and then there's all this like okay but we don't but we hate each other when we're oh it's so good and so like the banter and stuff and then one of my favorite sex scenes in here I think I talked about this was a book I read earlier in the year when I was still getting used to there being like sex scenes and romance books and now I'm just like whatever it's fine but this 
scene was written in a way that was so not jarring to me as someone who's not like a I don't read like erotica or anything because a lot of times when I read romance books the sex scenes will like change all of the like the writing style and just like it feels like someone else is writing that scene but here it still felt like it flowed with the rest of the story I just thought that was really well done and made for like a really good romance book so I really like this like series this book and I think I'm like the third book, like I said, that's coming out this year, so we'll see. But this one still sits in a nice place in my heart. There's a little bit of a, a, a road bump at a point in there. I think I did a review for this. If I did, I'll link it on the screen. That didn't quite make this a five stars for me, but it was like a 4.5. And I obviously really liked it, so I'm gushing about it now months later. Then we have a recent read and a huge shocker. At number seven, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. This was a five star read for me. This is a adult standalone like sort of fantasy. The fantasy element is that our main character Eddie LaRue made a deal with like death, the devil, who knows what he actually is, darkness, to live a life of freedom. Well she wasn't really specific and he twisted that and basically she's immortal. She can't die but she can't leave a mark on the world of any kind and no one will remember her. So we follow her in the like past timeline but then also the present and in the present eventually in the story she meets someone who does remember her and we follow all of that. But really we're just following her life and this story was so... was so good. I did a review for it, so I'll link that on the screen. It was just so atmospheric. Just the story of it, very character driven of following this woman and how she does try to make a mark, how she lives her life in this way. You know, no one remembers you, so you can't, like, you can't do anything traditional as far as, like, have a place, have a job, have friends, none of that. So, like, how do you survive? And then the dynamic between her and the, like, the villain guy, the guy that, like, took her soul, basically, is very interesting and compelling. There's a lot of just, like, theme stuff in here that is very interesting. And I loved it. It was a book that I would honestly reread and V.E. Schwab typically has not been a favorite of mine and this was five stars. Adored it. Then we have two books in a series that are ranked back to back. So number six is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff and number five is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff, both in the Nevernight series. So I finished up the Nevernight series this year. I do like book two a little bit more than book three, but I did love this series. If you don't know, this is an adult fantasy series that follows our main character of Mia, who's becoming a assassin. And the series is very dark and twisty, and I will link my reviews on the screen, but I loved both of these. I still think about Mia. I still think about the world. I still think about the world building. I think about everything, <sighs> and it's super good. I don't know what to say. Then at number four we have The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the first book in an adult fantasy series. This follows the main character of Nahri and she lives in 18th century Cairo and something happens where she gets pulled into the magical world of the jinn and so we follow her perspective but also the perspective of one of the jinn like political families, political like leaders and stuff and it's just wonderful. The world building is fantastic, the political machinations and everything, the magic, who she is, all of that. This is a series that I really want to continue soon in 2021 because I don't want to forget all of the like just intense world building that I got in here and all the characters and just everything going on. So good. I'm going to be linking reviews either on the screen or down below because I'm going to run out of cards. You can only have five per video and I don't know if I'm at my five yet. But anyway, I'll be linking reviews somewhere for you to check out my in-depth thoughts on all of these because I obviously just I don't have words for this video to talk about all these books that I love. That's too much for my brain to do in this video. Just know how much I deeply care. <laughs> then at number three we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is another adult fantasy series. This follows the main character of Rin and she is taking a test to go to this military academy which is like the most prestigious school so she can get out of her like small town and basically become like a warrior and we follow her path. This book is so epic but also so dark. This is based on some actual historical events so watch my other video for all the trigger warnings because there is some like really gruesome stuff in this that like shook me to my core. However it's so well done and the whole story is just so good like I'm like flashing back to like reading and I think over the summer. It is just mind-blowing. I mean I could I had a very hard time ranking between The Poppy War and City of Brass because I feel very similar about them in their like scope and the characters and like the brutality of the worlds and things like that. This one is more brutal than that one but like there's still there's still stuff <laughs> and both of them are just like so epic and they're both series that I really want to continue in 2021 and stay like in them because if I take too much time away I'm gonna like forget and lose some of the momentum because these are so masterful and complex and wonderful. So yeah. Number three, Poppy War. And number two is a romance book. 
and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is the romance book that has stuck with me the most from this year. This is a adult contemporary romance and our main character's father just died and she found out that he was having an affair and he had a house like a beach house with this woman and her like mom is like really devastated and she goes the main character goes to this house and not only does she get there and she like she's a writer so she like is feeling like writer's block there's a lot of emotions about her dad's situation and then next door is actually her like college writing rival who has always kind of been like her nemesis and she's like hated him and he's a jerk and whatever and they end up talking and basically challenging each other like he needs to write a romance book because that's what she writes and she needs to write a literary fiction book which is what he writes and they form this like relationship but it's much more than just a romance book it has like that romance element but it's one of the only books I've read that manages to have that and stay focused on that while also having other stuff going on in the background and not getting bogged down and turning into like plot soup which is something that tends to happen with some of romance books that take on too much and this did not this handles like grief and loss and you know figuring out things about your parents and your parents being like real people and like the dynamic between her and the guy Gus I'm forgetting her name right now but his name is Gus is so good like it just oh my god it, it, it is so good and like they're so good together and it's just great I mean I have not heard a bad thing about this book like I read it right before it came out I'm pretty sure and then everyone that's read it since like I have not heard a bad thing I'm sure there's people that don't like it someone in the comments is gonna be like I hated it and that's fine that's fine. However, I think it's fantastic. It is the romance book that sits the highest in my heart. It is my favorite romance book that I've read thus far. And then my number one book of 2020. Can you guess it? I hope you can guess it. This is basically why I ranked the books. One, because it was actually fairly easy for me to do, but two, because this book was number one and I had to be like, no, they're ranked because this book is number one. And that is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. This is when I should have known that the rest of 2020 was going to go downhill. Not that these books aren't fantastic, but I think I read this book in like January. <laughs> Maybe February, but I think it was January. And nothing can compare to how perfect this book is. I mean, this is definitely in like my top three books. Like, this is, like, The Night Circus is probably, is still my favorite book, but like, this is right underneath it possibly. Like, this is perfect. I, I can't even... I can't even describe to you. I still like very vividly remember this book and I am not always good with remembering books like after I read them, you know, but it's been like months. It's been, you know, almost 12 months. Oh no, I vividly remember this book. I want to reread this book and I very rarely want to do that. You guys know me. I very rarely want to do that. And this is the third book in the Winter Night Trilogy. I should probably get to that point. And because of that, I can't talk about like the plot much about this. However, this is an Eastern European inspired fantasy. Follows our main character the whole series through her entire life, Vasilisa. And she is basically this character. We follow her, through, like I said, through her entire life. She starts as a child in the first book. And she's a character who is basically like we notice is the bridge between like the magical world and like the folklore elements of the story and the real world and this takes place during like historical events that happen in like eastern europe and russia and there's a dynamic with her and like a god of like death slash winter and i cannot convey to you how perfect this book is i know i'm yelling at you and i'm sorry but like if y'all don't read this series, I swear to God. I know some people haven't liked the first book. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. You need to keep reading it <laughs> to get to this book. Like, I... The perfection that this is with the relationships of the, like, overarching plot of the themes. Like, everything ties together for this series beautifully. I have never read a more perfect finale. Ever. There is no parts out of place. There, it, it is, it is perfect. I mean, I want like art pieces of like multiple scenes in this book. Like this book just sits so highly in my feelings. Will I reread the entire series? Maybe at some point, yes. Will I reread this, this one book? Cause it's perfect and I have the context for the rest of the series and like I don't need to reread them all. Yes. This, this, it, I mean, again, what the character goes through. Everything is like so earned. Everything is so good. Everything is so atmospheric and poetic and beautifully written and all the magic and all the history. It's perfect. I know I'm shouting at you and I don't mean to, but it's so good. And I don't think I've ever felt, have I ever felt this passionately about like a favorite? I mean, besides like the Night Circus and like the Starless Sea. I don't know. This is so good. This is like one of the books of my heart, you know what I mean? Like what, like your top three books that you love the most, they're like a part of your soul. Like they change you as a person. That's this book. I know, it's dramatic. I know. I love it. I, I need to put it down and stop talking about it, but like it's so good y'all. Like it's, it's so good. All right, that is it for my favorite books of 2020. 
10 books. 10 books. Like I said, I will be doing my like book awards, or some of these books will pop up in the book awards, but you'll also get some additional ones. It'll be more fleshed out beyond just me squealing and being like, I love it! Because I'll be in the book awards saying like what element I love the books for, you know? I'll be hopefully a little bit more contained. Just bring it down a couple notches. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. Comment down below and let me know your favorite books of 2020. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!